Hello and welcome. You're watching The Devi Show. 30 minutes where we drill deep into an issue which has stayed underground, festering silently, but a matter which probably affects many. It's hard-hitting, it's real, it's your show. Here's what we have lined up for you. In a Devi Show expose, we uncover an alleged modern-day sweatshop in northern Johannesburg. A real situation which will not only boggle your mind, but will make you question our sense of humanity. So should you swim in about eight, five days? On a bony lang, or seven to sell parrot. They stay in here and then they requested to work longer hours. No, no, they didn't request. You told them that. Our lead story is so unbelievable that at first the Devi team took a step back to reassess if we had heard right. It all started with a distressed email from a concerned viewer who claimed that a sweat shop existed in Johannesburg and over 20 people were forced to work in deplorable conditions. We started digging deeper. What we found was so worrying that we dedicated our entire show to this disturbing expose. Times are becoming even more difficult for many South Africans. With the pandemic skyrocketing unemployment numbers, while desperate employees cling to their jobs at all costs. In the midst of the third wave, the Dev Show received a cry for help from a viewer via email who shared a heartbreaking story of conditions in what sounded like a sweat shop right here in Johannesburg. We set out to investigate the alarming allegations against the Sox Works and traced a former employee, Irvin Glovo, who described a worrying situation. Located in a retail factory park north of Johannesburg, it seems nothing untoward was going on until March 2020, when our first lockdown was announced. Remember, only essential workers were allowed to operate. So Irvin says the Sockworks owner, Eric Shaw, came up with a plan to circumnavigate and benefit from the situation. They were given a document which Irvin alleges employees had to sign without being given the opportunity to first read it. And they then moved in with their belongings. Mzengai and Lovo from Cosmo City worked for the Sock Works as a machine operator since 2018. He was another employee who found himself locked in last year. So should you maybe about eight five days on a bony lang or seven to sell parrot. So is it sitting inside there working? Yeah. All the time. All the time. You're not is there no place in the no. back to go and stand outside? Uh, in a video we received from an insider, it was clear that employees were living in worrying conditions. The storms are masoks in a macret or masoks, beggar and spontinia, and so go to Munto was in Jogungan and Joe Ula and Jem Cotway. Sensi kitchen a while, spare inside the apple, a bathroom like one of the one, seven Sanjane, Camera Ula, the Pesla, and in a while. The book such as a patrome or toa, who cares about Faz, Mabe Pumani and Gain and Shincha and Aganjalo and Jalo. We approached Labour Attorney Clifford Marshall, who says, from the evidence provided, the Basic Conditions of Employment Act was being flouted. Simply put, that's illegal. The law says, this law stipulates that everyone is entitled to an interval between um, workplaces and work, the work day. They're entitled to go home at the end of the work day, and over the weekend they're entitled to time off. They're entitled to leave. Clifford also raised concerns regarding the living arrangements. 
He says the law is specific when it comes to providing ablution and sleeping quarters for men and women. The showering of this showering facilities, they must be closed off properly. There must be separate facilities for both men and women. There must be, if, if men and women are going to be changing, then there must be separate change rooms for them to do so. With the factory running 24-7, former employees say it started to adversely affect the health of the workers. Tell Eric. I'm not feeling well, so there's a but okay, no problem, it's fine. But in King Abela, my company, Maunga Kul, Banga Kipelanga Pans, was with each other. Irvin says he was also met with very little compassion when he fell ill. So, the telling was a conga pandy, Ulanga Pandy. Having spent the night outside in an area used for storing refuse bins, Irvin says his condition deteriorated rapidly. A few weeks later, once they had recovered, both Irvin and Mzingai tried to reclaim their jobs. But Eric, the owner, wasn't interested. Like Irvin Savalelo Pande Song, it's a kosher song. Again, it's a blatant contravention of our labor laws. And if your employee becomes ill whilst on duty, you as the employer have an extra responsibility to assist that employee in getting proper medical care and keeping the job available for that employee whilst he or she is having that medical care, particularly since every employee has the right to take sick leave. It appears that someone blew the whistle on Eric in November, resulting in an inspection by the Labor Department. But Eric was seemingly able to hide evidence. <laughs> Coming up, we join the Department of Labor on an inspection and confront the factory owner. The other allegation against you is that these people here are working shifts in excess of 12 hours. Yes or no? Yes, they wanted to. Yeah. They wanted to? Yes. You're breaking the law again? Welcome back. You're watching The Devi Show. Before the break, part one of our investigation into allegations of a sweatshop operating in northern Johannesburg following a tip-off from one of our viewers. We spoke to former employees who told us about shocking work and living conditions. In part two, the authorities spring into action and the Davy show was there to witness it all unfold. Armed with these disturbing stories from former employees and cell phone footage from inside the Sockworks factory, we paid the company an unannounced visit. The employee who met us at the door claimed Eric wasn't in. We've just arrived here with the Department of Labor and the South African Police Service. We know for a fact that Eric is here because we've been communicating with his employees who contacted the Davy show initially. He's just sent someone to tell us that he's not here. We're not falling for that. We took our lead from the department. Yeah, the reason why we brought SAPS is for them not to deny us access. Once the department felt they had waited long enough, we went in. Let's go, guys. There were literally boxes of merchandise stacked to the ceiling in every room. Eric. Eric. Yeah. Uh, 
As we threaded our way through the maze of boxes together with the Labour Department, we bumped into owner Eric Shaw in a dark passageway. Yes, Eric. Eric! Hello, how are you? The Department of Labour needs to talk to you. Do you okay. want to come this way? We made our way into the reception area where the department took care of the formalities. My name is Sinjabolo. I'm an inspector from the Department of Labour. Yes. I'm here to conduct an inspection on health and safety mm -hmm. and COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So I'm with the uh, SAPS here yeah, mm -hmm. and the media. Confronted with our cameras, Eric agreed to an impromptu interview with ourselves and the department. And the allegation is that you've got a couple of labour contraventions here. Um, the people who work here are not allowed to leave. They sleep no, here. No, no. Uh, because, we, yeah, um, yes, um, they do sleep here because we're trying to um, um, prevent they get... Um, um, COVID. Um, yes, COVID on the daily commute. They're not allowed to do that. Um, we're not locking them in. We are just advising them and they're doing it. That no, you're not advising them, Eric. You're telling them if they're going to leave, they no longer have a job here. No, we do not say that. Yes, you do. But in a legal letter sent two weeks after the inspection, Eric now claims our team gate crashed the inspection and that the Devi team never disclosed that we were members of the media. Really? So I'm with the uh, SAPS here yeah? mm -hmm. and the media. Their written response goes on to say that the company never contravened labor laws and that their employees stayed at their workplace voluntarily to mitigate COVID concerns. Mr. Shao also claimed that he never told staff they would lose their jobs if they went home. The other allegation against you is that these people here are working shifts in excess of 12 hours. Mm. Yes or no? Yes, they wanted to. Yeah. They wanted to? Yes. You're breaking the law again? Do you know if we have a maximum amount of hours that you're meant to work? Yes. You know that? Yes. Then why are you doing this? Because uh, um, they stay in here and then they requested to work longer hours. No, no, they didn't request. You told them that. In his subsequent legal response, Eric claims employees are presently on shift cycles that don't exceed 12 hours. But when the department asked for the contracts to prove this, Eric came up with another excuse. Hmm? We have contracts. Contract employment. Yeah, for your employees. No, we don't. We are, as I said, we, we are a newer established company. We started it very small. And then, um, when did you start? We started um, in 2016. How are you new then if you started in 2016? Eric confirmed they didn't have formal contracts with staff, insisting that it's not a requirement of the National Bargaining Council. But the operation still falls under the Basic Conditions of Employment Act and contracts are undisputedly a requirement in law. Next, we addressed the living arrangements. So these people sleep in shifts? Yes. You're admitting that? In shift, in shift? Yeah, so the one group goes and works in the factory, the other group goes to sleep. Uh, yes, for the time being, but we intend to... For the free, time being? We are intend to, once we move over to the new property, so, so we that, want to go... Eric, do you understand we have laws in South Africa? Yes, I understand. Yes. Do you understand that you're breaking those labor laws? Do you understand that? And you are making more money because you've doubled your output and therefore your profit. These are the sucks you made, yeah? These people did that for you. Just bring me all your documentation. One more question. When people get sick, you tell them you go and you don't come back. No, we do not do that. I've got examples of people that you've done that to. Mzingai and Glovo. Erin Glovo. You've done that to them. You don't take them back. No, we don't do that. We know, for example, Erin Glovo had to sleep outside in the dustbin because he was sick. There was one day I recall that because we... Um, Why did you was it? There was... We... It's the... Um, I'm really run short That's no it. excuse. Why did you make him sleep outside by the bins? That was, um, at that time, we do not show what the symptoms We It's not against our work. We didn't want to do that. But it's just in case if there is something. Eric, that was under lockdown. We were love, wanted to take him to hospital. Eric, are you listening to yourself? You made a man go and sleep by the bin because you weren't bin. sure. It's not the bin. It's, we had the one yard, but there was nothing in there at, at that time. Outside in the cold? There was a summer, mid-summer. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. So because it was summer, it's okay.
In his legal response, Eric admits to there being an isolated incident during which an employee slept outside the building, but claims that the employee was given cash and transported to a clinic the following morning. Former employee Irvin and Lovo claims that he received 2,000 rands, but it was later deducted from his salary. The letter goes on to say that employees are free to seek medical attention. Coming up, a mouldy bathroom, a filthy kitchen and the storeroom where employees hot bunk in shifts. This is where the 23 employees are forced to sleep, all of them, and they sleep here in shifts in between boxes of socks. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. This is The Devi Show. We continue with our expose into an alleged modern-day sweatshop in Johannesburg. Earlier, former employees speak out about their work and living conditions. Then, the authorities started digging deeper. Next, the proof the Devi team did not expect to see. The department sat questioning Eric on his COVID protocols and labour issues. Uh, from your contracts, uh, your company documents, your health and safety file, mm -hmm. and COVID file. Eh? So while Eric went upstairs to gather his documents and contracts for the Department of Labour, we had a look around inside. Oh my God! This is the kitchen that all the other workers have to use. I mean, you can't even, you cannot even dis, dis, describe this mess. Look here, have a look. The walls and roof were covered in mold and the cupboard doors were broken. From there, we went into a storeroom, which doubles as sleeping quarters. This is where the 23 employees are forced to sleep, all of them, and they sleep here in shifts, in between boxes of socks. Can I have a look? Tucked away in between the boxes of merchandise, we found makeshift beds on the cold floor. So if you count the beds, one, two, six in the corner, eleven. Do the mats. That's enough beds for the employees to sleep in two shifts, all in the same room hidden amongst the boxes of socks they had manufactured. And on the shelves, their meagre bags of belongings were stashed away. The bathroom was a disgrace too. Again, a massive damp and mold problem. This is the one bathroom that services 23 people. The stink in here is, I'm actually grateful to be wearing a mask. I mean, as clean as they probably kept it, just look through the window. That's how people dry clothes here. Strung up outside the window was an array of underwear and towels. Men and women use this bathroom. I never thought that in my living life, I would actually see a sweatshop with my own eyes. We're standing here in 2021 and this is a democratic country with labour laws. We stumbled across a video online of Eric's upstairs quarters in the same building. It featured a spacious boardroom, modern kitchen and a bedroom complete with soft furnishings. But in his letter, Eric denies that the employees live in squalor and confirmed that he does sleep upstairs claiming that he sometimes sleeps on a camping mattress next to his desk. But back to the inspection. The department sat questioning Eric on his COVID protocols and labour issues, while the employees all waited in the passageways, as we continued on our way around the building. Eric is actually supplying. These are, these are big companies, guys. I mean, if, if, if I look at it, just here, Pushini, Markham, the fix. And there's, there's no problem with stock here that I can tell you. There, there's enough stock. Afterwards, we contacted the Fushini group for a comment. They sent a written response saying they have a certificate of compliance for the SOX works from the National Bargaining Council for the clothing manufacturing industry. But they have suspended all orders pending verification of allegations. 
we made contact with the National Bargaining Council's Chantal Naidu, who immediately conducted an inspection based on our findings. Due to the Soxworks not being compliant, we had revoked the compliance certificate. We had then informed all suppliers. Chantal says that the council has several areas of concern. There were five members that were not registered. There were day and night shifts being worked. They were working 12-hour shifts. So these are some of the contraventions that were found, not to forget that the members, the workers, were sleeping in the factory. Eric says he plans to reapply for his compliance certificate and is confident that it will be reissued. What's scary for me is that we probably wear these socks and we don't even know what's happening behind the scenes to make these socks. When Eric realized he was on the back foot during the inspection, he clearly lawyered up. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. It's Devi from the Devi Show on ETV. Devi, Devi Show. I just um, spoke to my attorney. Yes. And she would like to have a word with you. Your attorney? Yes. Okay. It's Michelle Nagy speaking. Yes. I'm um, Eric's employment and labor attorney. Yes. <laughs> so I just wanted to find out what's going on. He gave me a call just now stating yes. that a full crew is there as well as, I think, Department of Labor. But she had no understanding of the situation at hand. Uh, the Department of Labor is doing an investigation into yes. the labor conditions here and yes. from what I can see they've discovered deplorable living conditions. Deplorable. People sleep on the floor in shifts in this factory. Are you aware of that? No, I'm not aware of that. I haven't taken instructions from my client at all. So we asked her to speak to the department and we made our way to the factory itself where the socks lining the passageways and rooms are being made 24-7. So what you can see is that this is, this is relatively high-tech as a socks factory goes, but the difference between how people live and where they work, the difference is stark. And from the shift roster, it was clear that the employees were working around the clock, even on public holidays. Women's Day, number of pairs of socks, and there were women working on Women's Day, obviously. Here we also discovered a grocery list detailing staff contributions for their weekly shop. Based on this, Eric and an employee would do the shopping. There's keeper, I'm a 200, 200, or more into, and then, yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying Eric denies this and says it was a consensual arrangement. Literally scores of machines lined the factory floor, churning out thousands of socks every day. Meanwhile, the employees sat dejected. Despite South Africa being a democratic country with labor laws preventing this kind of abuse, the rights of these employees have been trampled on. I would suggest that the employees join a union. When they join a union, they have somebody to fight for them. As well, we at the Bargaining Council, we are here to assist in, in any way possible. But at the end of the day, people are desperate for work. Yeah. But if they're being exploited, um, the message is, is that the law and the institutions that uphold the law are there to help them. And that really sits at the heart of what our labor laws are all about. Our labor laws say our employees mustn't be exploited, they, that it's unfair to exploit our labor. Give them employment, let them earn and let them do their job, but not at the cost of exploit, exploiting them. It's true, we have laws in this country which protect everybody who lives here and often employers forget that and when you're desperate for a job, you overlook that too. Know your rights and ask for help. And that's where we leave it for this week. Continue to send us your story ideas via devi at etv.co.za. From me and the Devi team, heads up South Africa, let's keep our eyes fixed on the horizon. We've got this.